All right, let's go over our pieces that we've cut. We're gonna need four pieces that are 16 and a half inches long for our bench. Those will make up our legs. And then these are 11 and a half inches long. There's four of them and you'll see how those go together with our legs to make up our leg assembly. And then what I did here is this, just some scrap uh, two by fours and these will make the X's uh, of our legs. So these aren't cut to any specific length. These are way oversized. We won't need them that long, but uh, just some boards I had laying about. So I just split them in half. So I just set the table saw at inch and three quarter, split those in half. And then our two by sixes, I cut to 35 inches. Now this particular bench, I have to make it to fit a particular cushion for a, for a customer and her cushion is 34. So anytime I'm pocket holing, I'm gonna use pocket holes to put these uh, bench top together. I typically will make them an inch longer and then I'll cut it to a uh, specific size and then I don't have to worry about getting perfect alignment um, with uh, when, I, when I'm pocket holing them together, okay? As far as the left to right alignment goes. So that's all the parts that we need. Um, so basically we used about a, a two by four and a half and then I used one 10 foot uh, two by six. So we've got about $20 invested in material, uh, which, which isn't bad for this bench. And uh, we'll go ahead and start laying it out a little bit and putting it together. So this is basically how the leg assembly is going to look. It's gonna be put together pretty straightforwardly. Now there's a couple of different ways that this could be put together. Um, I am just going to put screws from the outside in. I'm going to use three and a half inch screws and screw in from the outside. Um, I, I think this is going to get painted, so that won't be a huge issue. And when I would rather put the screws from the out, if it's going to be painted, I'd rather put the screws from the outside than use pocket holes on the inside. Um, to me, it's a stronger joint. That's why I would do it that way. Even though I do, I would have to fill the holes before I paint, I would prefer to do that. That's just a personal preference. So so basically what we did, obviously the top stretcher, 11 and a half inches. Again, our legs are 16 and a half inches tall. 11 and a half inch stretcher. It's gonna get flush up top. And this stretcher actually does two things for us. Number one, obviously it's a stretcher, helps with our leg assembly. But number two, we could screw from the bottom into the top bench top when we go put the bench top on and that gives us something we don't have to use pocket holes or anything like that um, so so anyhow that's what we're gonna do right here and then so what I did here just so you can see this is the leg I just measured up four inches and then so this is four inches and then put this bottom stretcher at four inches okay um, so pretty straightforward so we're just gonna use three and a half inch screws screw it all together and then we'll talk about how we're gonna make our x frame okay so the leg assemblies are done and according to the plans uh, according to the computer when we put this uh, angle piece on like such uh, that is supposed to be 38.8 degrees but i can tell you from uh, a vast experience that will never be very accurate now uh, it's pretty close possibly but when you when you actually build it in real life, uh, it's a little bit different than the computer. So here's the situation. The computer says 38.8 degrees. So we are gonna use that, probably 39 degrees, something like that. But but if you, well, what we're gonna do, let me just line this up. So you can see that the top, see how the top one goes to the top and the bottom one goes to the bottom at that corner, okay? So it's really important that you understand that corner the top right, and then here we're going to the bottom left. That's what we're looking for, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to my saw here, my miter saw, and I'm gonna go ahead and set it, set the miter saw to 39 degrees. So that's 40, 39, 38.8, close enough. And we're gonna use that as a guide. And you'll notice too how, how much, longer than that that is that's necessary so there's some key things that i've done a bunch of these x's uh, that i want to walk you through here 
But so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a 39 degree angle on one end and see if I think that's gonna be pretty close or not. So let's do that and I'll come back and we'll, I'll, we'll go to the next step. Okay, so now we're at the next step. And so what I did, you can see I cut that at 39 degrees because that's what the computer said. So then what we're gonna do is we would come up here and we would align this to that. Okay, see that? Oh, wow. Look at that, it's perfect. Uh, but it's not. Because look at how far off we are at the corner down here. So, 39, that should have lined up right there at the corner and you can clearly see it doesn't. So, that is not the right angle. Which, I kinda knew that going in. Um, so, let me show you what we wound up doing which is, I like to know what the angle is according to the computer. Um, I think sometimes that can be useful and that's, that is technically where I usually start. But what I did was I lined this board up just like I'd showed previously, right? So that is correct. And then you can see I drew a line. And down here, I drew a line, right? So obviously whatever the angle is at the top, the angle is gonna be the same at the bottom. But we don't know what that angle is. But now we have a reference point, so we'll come back to our miter saw. And now we can set the angle of my miter saw. So now you can see that's 39 degrees, right? Let me back that up just a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. But you can see how far off we are on that angle. So it needs to be more than um, 39, but how much more? Is it, is, it, is it an exact 45? So that, no, that's not quite 45. That's like 44 degrees. And you can see that is pretty stinking close, actually. I can live with that. So I think that's what we're gonna try right there. 44 degrees. Okay, so I am gonna show you a bit more detail on these X's when I do the next one but I wanted to show you the finished product. So our two by four frame is obviously three and a half inches wide. And these are one and three quarter by one and a half. I just, for simplicity, I just split the two by four and a half and, and ran with it. And that's what I usually do. So, but what I wanted to show you here was the angles. So we cut that. I think I actually wound up using 43 degrees but you can see it's really really close it's probably not perfect but you know it's kind of supposed to be rustic anyhow so on uh, this would be the inside of the leg and you can see it's totally flush right there so th this x is totally flush but on this side there's a bit of a recess so it should be a half inch recess and a bit of a recess although it's a little bit difficult to see there is a recess there so it's not it's not totally flush and you can see too that that angle maybe is not exactly a hundred percent but it's close enough for what we're doing okay so that's basically what the finished product is going to look like now we'll take a look at the other leg in a bit more detail um, with that one uh, as we go through and, and build it Something else that uh, I wanted to point out, what's nice about having this top and bottom stretcher with this construction process is having the ability to come here, because it's gonna be hidden anyhow, there's gonna be a top on this, is to be able to come in here at an angle and run a, a screw in here uh, up from the bottom and from the top to be able to hold these pieces in. So that's kind of a nice bit of a bonus, because uh, otherwise it would be kind of hard to get under here and, and hold them in. And, um, so this this will make the process really, we'll just, we'll drill a pilot hole at an angle a little bit. And we'll probably use two and a half inch screws to hold those in there. Cause they're, they're struck, they provide no structure really. Um, they're, they're purely for decoration. So we'll go ahead and get those secure and go from there. All right. So this is my other assembly that we've already put together. Now I've already cut the one end at 45 degrees so i'm going to set that up in the corner just like we had done previously now what should happen if i go from the, on this edge right here if i come down that should 
ding, 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 line up to my corner. Now you can see it doesn't line up exactly. So if I budge that over so it does, see now you can see that does line up. You can see that angle is close enough, right, for what we're doing that that's what we want to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark, and I'm, I am just sort of eyeballing and getting right here on top of it, if you can see, and I'm just going to mark it where the point actually is, okay? Now, I'm not going to cut there. I'm just marking it there. So you can see there's my mark. So I'm going to come over here to my miter saw, and I want to come over about so i'm just kind of just i want to basically i want to cut it long now obviously i don't want to cut it that long but i want to cut it i would probably start at uh maybe three sixteenths eighth of an inch long okay and we're again we're just eyeballing it here but i would could even go a quarter long let me go ahead and cut this talking about so okay so we're long you know that's not a quarter that's probably an eighth a little bit longer maybe an eighth maybe three sixteenths but what i want to show you here is cut it long okay now look so i cut it where i marked it but look at how long we are see how we're we're a good bit long right we're probably at least a quarter long because that's how that piece has got to go in there but that's what we want. We want to sneak up. We want to sneak up on this exact fit uh, just a little bit. So I'm going to just take a little bit off of this and we'll sneak up on it a little bit. And I'll show you the next step. This is what I really wanted to show you because I think it's just, it's so important um, to get these X's looking good and make it so easy. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Uh, I don't think you will be able to but so anyhow you saw me mark it and when i went to cut it just a little bit more i cut it and i took the line and but now you can see it's wedged in there pretty tight okay uh and that's exactly what we want we want we want a nice tight fit and so what i'm gonna do now is just <laughs> So, our leg assemblies are obviously complete. Uh, they're in position. Notice the recess is to the outside. And then, of course, over here, the recess is to the outside as well. Um, so, that's taken care of. So, what I did here is I came in off the edge three and a half inches um, because the plan is to cut a half inch off of this. Now, originally, I had planned on using pocket screws uh, to put these these boards together but the problem with pocket screws is you know as they say time is money and uh, if we can save some time then let's do that and that's one of the advantages of having this top stretcher like this if you look at various uh, farmhouse or just benches in general that stretcher is not always there but in our case the stretcher is there so we can easily come in here with a couple of screws right there, a couple of screws right there, then come to the outside, a couple of screws right there, and we can hold these three boards together without the necessity of running pocket holes. And I promise you, you can run them screws quicker than you can pocket hole it and then use the pocket hole screws. Uh, to, you're still gonna have to mount the bench to the legs anyhow so we're eliminating the pocket holes for this piece here now if we were concerned if if you were using a, lo a longer bridge i'm not concerned here the one advantage to using pocket holes is that these boards would whelp a little bit okay if, especially if it was a longer board but what i would probably do maybe use pocket holes um that that would probably be the preferred method per se but if not we could simply take a, a piece of two by four we could bevel it i usually bevel it 30 degrees and just boom 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 and hold it together that way too and if you hold it back a couple of inches from the edge um, then you wouldn't see that 
when the, the bench was, was upright anyhow. So, uh, but in our case, we're not gonna do that. Now, the one thing that I really would recommend doing is, and we're definitely gonna do it, is go ahead and, and putting a stretcher across the legs here. Now, the one consideration I had, let me just grab a two by four here. Yeah. Okay, if we wanted to be lazy, we could just whack it right here, boom, boom, maybe even put a bevel on it, and then you could just run a couple of screws, boom, boom, and you're done. You know, that 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 would hold the legs. But no, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do, we're, we are gonna go ahead and have it flush. The stretcher will be flush between these two legs, and then we are gonna use a couple of pocket holes, okay? So we're gonna have to get the pocket hole machine out anyhow. Um, so, so this distance right here, 21 inches in this particular example, we'll run a couple of pocket holes, two and two, and screw it into here, and uh, basically we'll be done. So we're gonna mount our legs to our boards, and then we're gonna put that stretcher in. And then more or less, then we do have to take off a half inch off of this side, half inch off of that side. Um, and probably what I'll do is not do half and half, I'll probably just slide them legs over a little bit uh, because these these did line up real good on both ends. So what? So being how they're all lined up, I'll just cut off one end because I, I I made these an inch long, uh, which is typically what I do when I do pocket holes because I can trim them to an exact size. Uh, but in this case, I got them cut all nice. They all line up real good. So I will just cut off one end and. Uh, make them exactly 34 like like it's necessary for the seat cushion put in our stretcher and we're done maybe a little light sanding just to polish it all off and uh then we'll be done all right so there we go we've got our 21 inch stretcher cut i marked in center and just kind of eyeballed my stretcher there and got my two and a half inch screws ready to go in my pocket hole screws ready to go in and just one thing to really keep in mind when you are putting in that stretcher make sure it's flush on the bottom don't worry about being flush at what the top is because the top is really the bottom but so when you flip this bench over upright it's nice and flush on the underside there okay so just put that together and then we'll do we'll we'll cut the one inch off here and and then we will go ahead and do a finish sand over everything and i might even route the edges of our top here just to give them a nice round over oh, it's starting to look like something it's starting to look like something so now what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and use my ryobi uh palm router it's got that uh three eighths round over on it and we're going to go ahead and give it a good rounding over on top and give a nice round over to it so this is the finished piece after the final uh, sand that we're gonna do on it we did round over the edges on the top a little bit with our sander just you know just kind of gives it a nice little round over there got the next nice X detail on it so pretty straightforward piece super sturdy um that while the legs were super sturdy without the stretcher on the bottom there um it definitely helped give it you know even more sturdiness and one thing i will point out we could have put three of those two by fours across the bottom there um, and what that would have done is that would have give us a little shelf where if we wanted like a little wood crate or something, um, we could have slid in there for a little extra storage there. Um, I might propose that to the customer and you know, Hey, that gives us another opportunity to make an extra buck or two, making some little wood crates that would slide in there for some extra storage there because they're going to use this as an entry entryway bench what they're going to be using it for so that's really it for this one nice little simple project and hopefully you enjoyed this uh kind of walk through build video on, on how it all goes together and um, pretty straightforward project
Thanks for watching.